G'day everyone, my name's Barney and today we're going to be making a very simple but very robust character controller inside P5.js so you can move your players around the screen with just the keyboard keys. Now there'll be code in the description if you want to just grab that immediately, otherwise I'll go through it right now. To start off with today, I've just got a very basic player class mapped out. So as you can see in the constructor, it takes in an X and a Y location and I just store that onto the player. And I've also set a speed variable to be four. And obviously this is very configurable. You can even pass this in in the constructor if you want. I've then got a blank update function and this is where we'll be doing most of our coding today. And then after that, you can see I've also got a draw function and this just simply draws a red circle at the location of the player. At the top of our script, we can then declare our player object and inside the setup function, we can actually create that player and we're creating it in the middle of the screen. So we're giving it an X and a Y of width on two and height on two. Inside the draw function, I'm then calling the player update function and the player draw function. So this will update our player and then obviously draw it. So when we run this, we get our player in the middle of the screen, which is great. But if we press any of the keys on our keyboard, we notice nothing is happening and that's because our update function is still blank. So let's work on that next. The way we're gonna add movement to our character is we've got a movement vector here and I've just initialized it to be zero, zero and we're gonna modify its X and Y based on which keys we're pressing. I'm then setting the magnitude of this vector to be our speed variable and this just caps the player's motion to be at maximum the speed of our player because you can imagine if we're moving up at full speed and right at full speed, the diagonal that we end up going on is faster than our maximum speed. So this set mag will just cap our speed to the player's speed. And then what we can do is now that we've calculated all of our movement speeds, we can add those X and Y's from the movement into the player's position X and Y. So I'm just gonna go through a quick example of what you might try initially. And this is something that I first tried when I was trying to do this, but it's actually an incorrect solution. So if you wanna just skip to the correct code, you can go to the next chapter, but otherwise I'm gonna run through this right now. So what we're doing is we're checking the inbuilt P5 key is pressed Boolean. And this just lets us know if a key is being pressed on the keyboard. And then what we're doing is we're just going through the four different keys that we're interested in. So I'm using the W, A, S, and D for movement of this character. And you can see that the key variable is also a built-in P5 variable, and it just tells us which key has been pressed. So I'm just saying if the A key is pressed, move to the left. If the D key is pressed, we move to the right. And then we do the same thing for up and down with W and S. So when we run this and then press on the keyboard, we can see that our character is actually moving in the four directions just like we wanted to. However, if we press say W and D at the same time, you can see that the D is overriding the W because we pressed it last. The reason this happens is that the key variable actually only stores the most recent key press. So if we press a second key, we just lose the key that we're already holding down. And so we only get movement in one direction at a time and it gets some really funky behavior. So the way we can fix this is to actually create a map that just records which keys we've got pressed down at any given time. And then when we release it, we remove it from that map. And thankfully P5 makes this really straightforward for us. So what we've got is we've got our map here of all the keys that we're pressing at any given time. And I've just declared it as an empty JavaScript object. And then inside the key pressed function, we are gonna take that key variable, which remember is just the key that we've most recently pressed. And we're gonna set it to true inside of our key pressed object. And then when we release a key inside the key released function, we're gonna actually delete that key from our pressed key object. So this means that our pressed keys is only gonna be holding whichever keys we've got currently pushed down at any given time. So now we can get rid of that code where we were checking the key variable and we can use our pressed keys instead. So we can just say, if the pressed keys dot A is true, then we want to move to the left and we can do the same for D and to the right, W and up, S and down. And now when we run this, we can see that we can move in all of the four directions as well as going diagonally. And that is how you can make a very simple but robust character controller inside P5.js so you can control your players on the screen with just the keyboard keys. I really hope that you learned something from today's video. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up. It really helps out. YouTube reckons you'd like this video next. Otherwise, there's a playlist here with all my other P5.js videos in it so you can become a P5 aficionado in no time at all. I'll see you next time.